Hi, it's Brian from PN. Vegans vs meat eaters. It's a famous feud. Some vegans believe meat increases your risk of disease and destroys the planet. Meanwhile, meat eaters argue that giving up animal foods leads to nutritional deficiencies. And both sides say their approach is healthier. So, which approach is right? In this video, you'll hear our surprising take on this debate. You'll also learn the real reasons plant-based diets may lower disease risk, and whether eating red and processed meat raises disease risk, as well as how to eat for a better planet. Finally, how to help yourself or your clients choose the best eating approach regardless of the diet label. Let's go. Does eating a fully plant-based diet reduce your disease risk? Many people assume that one of the big benefits of plant-based diets is they reduce risk for disease. A number of studies support this. One large study showed that fully plant-based eaters scored highest on the healthy eating index, which is a measure of diet quality. Omnivores, or people who eat at least some meat, scored lowest on the healthy eating index. Meat eaters were also more likely than other groups to be overweight or obese. And other research has also linked vegetarian diets with better health indicators, from blood pressure to waist circumference. So, does that settle it? Should we all go vegan or vegetarian? Not necessarily. That's because your overall dietary pattern matters a lot more than any one food. Eat a diet rich in minimally processed whole foods, like fruits and vegetables, plant and or animal proteins, whole grains, beans and legumes, nuts and seeds, avocados, olives, and other healthy fats, and it likely doesn't matter that much if you include or exclude animal products. Most people, more than 90%, don't consume enough fruits and veggies. According to the US CDC, fewer than 10% of people eat one and a half to two cups of fruit and two to three cups of veggies per day. Further, other research has found that ultra-processed food, like chips, ice cream, and soda, make up nearly 60% of all calories consumed in the US and UK, 40% in Australia, and a rapidly growing amount worldwide. So, fully plant-based eaters score higher on that healthy eating index not because they give up meat, but rather because they eat more minimally processed whole plant foods, such as veggies, fruits, beans, nuts and seeds. Also, since it takes work and a certain level of thoughtfulness to follow this eating style, they may also be more conscious of their food intake, which leads to healthier choices. Plant-based eaters also tend to sleep more and watch less TV, which can also boost health. In other words, meat may not be the problem. A diet loaded with highly processed foods and low and whole nutrient-rich foods, on the other hand, is a problem, regardless of whether the person eats meat or no meat. Does meat increase your disease risk? Well, for years, we've heard that meat eating raises risk for cancer, especially when it comes to red and processed meat. And research suggests that red and processed meat, such as lunch meat, canned meat, and jerky, as well as heavily grilled, charred, or black and red meat can be problematic for some people. But that doesn't mean you have to give up bacon, salami, or hot dogs forever. While eating processed meat can significantly increase your relative risk of diseases like colon cancer, your absolute risk or your overall chances of getting colon cancer is still quite low. Now to be clear, we don't consider processed meat a particularly healthy food. There are much higher quality proteins and fats out there. But how much red and processed meat raises your risk for disease depends on how much of those foods you eat, especially the processed ones, as well as other lifestyle habits, such as exercise, sleep, and stress, and the other foods you consume. Getting plenty of sleep, exercising regularly, not smoking, and eating a diet rich in veggies, fruits, and other whole foods can definitely reduce your risk. Is plant-based eating the best way to go environmentally? In terms of the environmental costs, consuming protein from animals is less efficient than getting it straight from plants. But that doesn't necessarily mean you must completely give up meat in order to save the planet. Unless, of course, you want to. If you don't want to eliminate meat completely, here are five ways to reduce the environmental impact of your diet. One, 
limit your meat intake by systematically lowering your consumption to about three ounces of meat or poultry a day, or at least less than you eat now. And lower your consumption of all animal products to under 10% of calories. Two, choose sustainably raised meat if possible, which can improve crop diversity and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Three, eat more meals at home, which requires less packaging and less shipping. Four, purchase locally grown foods to reduce transportation miles and increase the number of smaller, more diverse local crops. And five, slash your food waste, which not only prevents wasting all the resources that went into producing the food, but also prevents the greenhouse gases emitted when food rots in a landfill. Is meat the best source of iron and a lot of other nutrients? Meat eaters sometimes argue that one of the cons of a heavily plant-based diet is this. Without meat, it's harder to consume enough protein and certain minerals, and there may be some truth to this. Meat, poultry, and fish come packed with protein, B vitamins, iron, zinc, and other minerals we need for optimal health. Compared to meat, plants often contain lower amounts of these nutrients. In the case of iron and zinc, animal sources are more readily absorbed than plant sources. And compared to other groups, fully plant-based eaters take in the lowest amounts of protein and also run a higher risk of other nutrient deficiencies, such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, iodine, iron, zinc, and omega-3 fats like EPA and DHA. Is this proof that everyone should eat at least some meat? No. It just means that fully plant-based eaters have to work harder to include all of those nutrients in their diets, or take a supplement in the case of B12. Any diet of exclusion takes more effort. The more food someone excludes, the harder they have to work to include all of the nutrients they need for good health. Any eating pattern can be healthy or unhealthy. Someone can technically follow a fully plant-based diet without eating any actual whole plants, building their diet around vegan chips, fries, sweets, sugary breakfast cereals, toaster pastries, soft drinks, and so on. And meat eaters might also include similar foods. Vegetarian and carnivore diets only indicate what people eliminate, not what people include. What you include is likely more important. Most clients don't really care about diet labels anyway. They just want to get healthier, leaner, and fitter. And they usually don't care what eating pattern gets them there. So, rather than fixating on a specific diet, help clients align their eating choices with their goals, their values, and their abilities. Ask questions like, what are your goals? What is your life like right now? What nutrition and food preparation skills do you already have? What are the foods you like that make you feel good? Wherever they're starting from, simply encourage clients to make slightly better choices, improving food quality and the variety of nutrients they're consuming. A little better for most people involves eating more minimally processed whole foods, especially more vegetables and more protein from animal and or plant foods. These might sound like small actions, and that's the point. Unlike huge dietary overhauls, it's these small, accessible, and sustainable actions that truly lead to lasting change. And more than 100,000 clients have taught us, consistent small actions, repeated over time, add up to big results. Also, the simple action of bringing more awareness to one's diet can have benefits of its own. This may be partly why just as many people report phenomenal transformations going from eating meat to eating mostly or fully plant-based as the reverse. New eating patterns require shopping for, preparing, and consuming new foods and recipes. This added awareness, energy, and focus usually results in better quality, more intentional food choices. Bottom line, nutrition camps, whether vegan, keto, carnivore, or other, should unite. Our time is better spent working together to build universal skills and actions that everyone needs. More sleep, eating slowly, more veggies, rather than fighting over whether to eat meat or not. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn even more about this topic, check out the video description below for the link to the full write-up. And make sure to click the like button if you found this video helpful. In the comments, 
Let us know if you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. But man, this is working. I feel like this is working pretty well. <laughs> I screwed it up even with the, phew, I'm like sweating up here. Third time's a charm. Fun, bud. Okay. <laughs>